sales systems, how to streamline your process from start to finish to take people from being a cold lead to being a sale and being enrolled in your business. Guys, today I really wanna focus on this because I find that a lot of people, what happens is they get an abundance and they start to get traffic. Maybe you watch lots of our videos and you understand now how to bring people in from Facebook. But when that happens, they don't have a succinct back end or a sales process to nurture and help people move from becoming a lead or an inquiry to then becoming a sale. Now, first, before we even start on that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about um, the theory of constraints. Now, I think I've got the book here, The Goal by Dr. Eli Goldratt. Amazing book, get it on Audible because the book sounds amazing. They've done a great job in recording it. Now, why am I talking about this book? Why am I talking about something called the theory of constraints? And if you Google it, you'll probably find a whole lot of manufacturing information around manufacturing plants that use it. Well, I'm a simple guy, so I like to simplify things down. The theory of constraints, if we really think about it, is kind of like a garden hose. If you imagine a garden hose, at any one point in time, and it's got a whole bunch of kinks in it, right? You know, those ones that have been around the back of your mum's house, dad's house, you've got the rubber hoses connected to the tap, you try and turn it on, a little bit of water starts going and then it stops, right? It hits a kink. There's a kink that's been blocked, it's got knots in it, and there's tons of them in the hose, right? And at the other end, a little bit of water trickles out. Now, at any one point in time, what you need to realize is there's only one kink that's stopping the water from flowing. Yes, there's 50 kinks in the hose, but to get the water flowing, to get momentum happening, there's only one kink that you need to be able to unkink right now. And that's the most important thing is to unkink that first one. So you need to think of your sales process as a hose. If you imagine that there's a hose flowing through from lead and inquiry all the way through to the point where there's water flowing, there's momentum, there's money flowing into your bank account, what are the kinks that come along the way? So let's just imagine that you're doing phone sales, right? That's the most easy and effective one for us to look at. It also works in funnels, it works in everything else, but I wanna use that one as an example, then I'll give you some of our tips. So if we're looking at a normal uh, phone sales process, what we have is we have a inquiry come in, we have a lead generated, right? And then from there, you may have an appointment set of calling to book them in. So the options are, we have lead, then we, the, the next part of the process, if we're looking at the flow, right, the hose, is that it could be an appointment booked, they could say that they don't want an appointment, or they could not answer, right? So already you can start to see, there's a, this, this is gonna be a big, huge Venn diagram, lines and boxes and things going on, because that's what happens, right? They all end up getting to one place, but that is what's going to, what's going to happen. So let's go on the first, let's go on the first level, the angle where they book an appointment, great. What happens after they book an appointment? Well, again, there's multitude of options. They have their own appointment. So the, number one is they show up. Number two is they don't show up. Number three is that they cancel, right? Another three options. You're like, Kim, there's so many options going on. Grab a piece of paper and draw it out. It's not that hard once you start doing it. So when they get to the point where, cool, they, they show up, then they either purchase or they don't purchase. That's the only two options, right? Or you need to call them back at another time. We'll give another three, right? Three seems to be the theme today. So then you have those three options. Then if they purchase, great, you have your sales process. Then if they don't purchase, then you have a follow-up sequence or maybe they weren't just the right fit. And next is that it got delayed, so you might have to reschedule that one as well. So that's the end part of that process. Then if they said no, right? So that's if the, if the sale goes through. And if they said no to the sale, obviously there's a process of following up, re-engaging, down-selling. And then if they had to book back later, you have to book in the appointment and they go back in the loop again, right? So that is if they book an appointment. Now, if you, and the appointment was successful. So what if they don't show up for the appointment? Then you go, okay, cool. Well, if they don't show up to the appointment, you need to follow up again. They fall back in the sequence. They fall back to the step where they get booked in for an appointment. Or if they cancel, then you need to have a process for what happens if they cancel, right? And each and every single one of these steps is part of the sales nurturing process. But if you don't have a succinct way in doing it, what you'll find is a lot of leads will fall through the cracks. So you need to be able to actively think, oh, cool, at each point, what do I do, right? What happens? Now, the easiest thing that I like to think about for people, and one of my biggest tips, is to actually map this out. And grab a big whiteboard or a big piece of paper and draw out exactly what that looks like. 
and then each step along the way, you can have a nurturing process. And that's gonna be one of my biggest tips for you guys. So if you think about it like this, when a lead comes in, they're opting, they're registering for something, you need to have a sequence that delivers them value based on what they registered for. That's number one. Then the second part is, when they are booked an appointment, you need to have a follow-up sequence for that. <clears throat> so when an appointment is booked, what you need to have happen is you need to send reminders, you need to have emails, SMSs, not only just saying, hey, we have something coming up, but instilling in them some value as to why they'll show up for the call. Because no one's gonna show up and have a conversation with you if they don't think they're gonna get value out of it. Is that to make sense? So what you wanna think about is in each of these processes, in each of these parts along the way, how do you help encourage them to go from being a lead to then becoming a sale? right and not just because you want to sell them but because you can add value to them and we can enroll them in what we do and help them grow even more so if you think about those processes each and every single step there needs to be a follow-up from that and ideally in the best world you will have a crm system that does that for you right so you can spend a lot of time energy effort in manually doing that or use a system like active campaign infusion soft um, hubspot whatever it might be that you use Utilize them to drive those forward and automate that process for you. We're we'll surprised how many people appreciate when you follow up and when it's automated, hey, even better. Now, that is on the, like, the physical side of things. What about like the physical emailing, following up? How could we use our strategies on social media to amplify that too? Hmm, great question. So what I recommend is once people register, once people opt in, they get to a certain step, is to retarget them. So that means that anyone that opts in and they get to a certain point in your funnel, send them more information about your company, send them client testimonials, send them videos, send them strategies that will help them on social media. So what you can do is for every single person that does that, what that allows you to do is to consistently provide them value. So when they see you again on Facebook, they go, oh, here's client testimonials. So what we're doing is we're reassuring that they've made the right decision to have a call, right? We're reassuring them that everything that you're doing is okay, right? It's good. We really are going to help you. You're going to get the best result possible here. So we want to make sure that as they go through, they're getting supported on email, they're getting supported on the phone, they're getting supported on social media, that what they've done is made the right decision. And that's really, really important in nurturing them. And that's one of our biggest sales tips and strategies is to ensure that when they come in, you know what the sales process is so that you can support them at each and every single level. So if you do that, then you get the best result possible. But if you don't do that, will you be successful? Will you still make sales? Probably. But will you make as many sales as if you do this? Probably not. So the key takeaways and tips here is number one is to map out that full process. Understand all your kinks in your garden hose, right? And then how you can improve upon them. Number two is go, what is my follow-up going to be? Build out a follow-up or like 2.1, follow-up on email, follow-up on phone, like SMS. And then 2.2 is follow-up on social media. How do you retarget them? How do you send them more information about what it is that you're doing so that you can consistently provide them with value? That's the big key, that's the thing for you to think about. Now, if you can do that, that is going to drive you to success when it comes to a sales system, right? And there's many different like uh, housings or software, if you will, that you can run those systems in. Again, Infusionsoft, Close.io, a few different ones that you can use to do that. But the most important part is if you don't do those two things, if you don't look at your follow-up, and then also map out your garden hose, what are your constraints going to be? You won't be able to figure it out from there. It's not going to work. So I highly, highly recommend going through that process. And please, if that made sense to you, or if you have any questions on that, comment below and ask and let me know and go, cool, I've done that. Send me a picture of your, uh, your garden hose. Or go, cool, actually, you know, that made a lot of sense to me because now I can see where I'm falling off. I'm not following up, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. And I uh, really appreciate hearing from you guys. Let me know what you're doing and then we'll see if we can also give you a little few tidbits on, on helping as well. But just those tips alone, if you do that, will dramatically change the way that you approach and that you are looking at and your, the results you're getting from your sales. So guys, please, if you like this video, give me a little cheeky like, give me a little thumb up. We really appreciate it. And make sure that you subscribe so that you can always see these videos first 
for anyone else and we can continually provide you with value all the time so give us a subscribe as well until next time guys i'm kim you've been awesome adios we'll see you next time